Hey, your music is too loud. This is the Worship Team Training Podcast. Now, here's your host, Brandon Dempsey. Hey, worship teams, leaders, and friends, thank you again so much for connecting here with us on the Worship Team Training Podcast. Thank you for subscribing and for your support and attention. We also thank you for visiting worshipteamtraining.com and be sure to check out our membership site for worship leaders and worship teams, Worship Team Training University. That is WTTU.co. You can catch all of the other postings that we do here at worshipteamtraining.com and also catch Worship Team Training on Instagram. Watch our shows on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash worshipteamtraining. Follow our Bible highlights on Uversion, Worship Team Training, Brandon Dempsey. Interact and follow us on Snapchat and Twitter, our address at worshiptt. Be sure to sign up for the Monday Morning Digest at worshipteamtraining.com. The homepage pop-up, put in your email address, and we will send you out a free three-day devotional that you can put on your iPad, device, iPhone, whatever, and read along with what we put out already on Bible.com and version, the heart of the worshiper is there for you. It's a free download. And for those of you who've already subscribed to our newsletter, mucho thanks as more news comes your way every Monday directly into your inbox. What's coming up? We have April the 23rd. That is uh, today, Monday, uh, our worship Bible study at 8 a.m. for our university members. And that's just a little part of what you get out of becoming a member at WTTU besides our 800 article video vault of content and fresh weekly live editions that we put out as well. So check everything out at WTTU.co. On Tuesday, on our Facebook Tuesday show, you will find our next topic, Make Music, and that's what this Word of the Day is about as well. We'll be talking about that, and also Annie Moses Band will be with us. That's right, Annie Moses Band. Band will be with us this coming Thursday, April the 26th at 11 a.m. Become a member at WTTU to watch and look at all of our other shows and events at WTTU.co slash events. The word of the week. Here is your word of the week. Music. The definition. I mean, there's lots of definitions, right? Well, the one I found in my Mac dictionary says vocal or instrument sounds are both combined in such a way to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. It's the art of science in composing or performing music. It's also a sound perceived as pleasingly harmonious. That, that's kind of a – Wow. I mean, that's kind of heady. Uh, Also, uh, written or printed signs. Rent is what you do over at Netflix or maybe Amazon, but music can also be defined as rented. (laughs) There I go again. (laughs) We just have so much fun here. Look, you got to be you got to be human no matter the mistakes. Right. Uh, Music is the written or printed signs representing uh, instrumental sound, uh, composition, scores, music. You know, it's what we do week in and week out when we lead worship and when we make music. Here is your verse of the week. Psalm 57, 7. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. That is one of my most favorite verses of the Psalms. I have many of them, but each time when I open my Bible, I go back to this treasure in 57, 7, because I'm a musician at heart. I'm a singer of my soul. I just love making music just like you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. You listen to the podcast because you want to learn the best for your music development, your heart for worship, and what is essential for your worship team, ministry, and church. So again, we thank you. Question of the week. Here we go. Does music have the power to unify the church and how does it connect generations? Now, many of you come from different churches and worship teams where ages are all over the place. You may be in a church where it's just nothing but 
20 somethings or younger. It could be 30s. It could be all over the map, up to 70s. You may be in a church where it gets, it just could be 60 plus and above. Does it matter? Well, our worship team training leaders know that music has many different meanings for many different people. It Just like the definition, it brings expression, thoughts, memories, inspiration, healing, prayer, etc. After God giving Jesus to mankind, music truly is one of the greatest gifts on earth. That was also said by Martin Luther. Now, in my book, The Journey of the Worshipper, which you can find at WTTU.co, I talk all about how music is an essential way of life for the follower of Jesus because when we worship our Lord, we are making melody with our hearts. We're making melody with our souls. It's amazing, isn't it, just how one note can make an entire difference in a piece of music. Uh, Right now, I am actually writing some music with friends, and we are talking about the process of song, the writing of it, and it's amazing how you can just take one chord and one note out of that chord can make a complete different universal sound uh, that's unparalleled to something else that you've done. I mean, music has such a, a way to bring familiarity as well as prosody and uh, contrast, light, darkness, you name it. And just by changing of one note. And it's, it's also amazing how, to me, how one lyric can stir an emotion or an idea. Just one word can make a complete difference as well, just like one note. Now, the big three is what we call it. Melody, harmony, and rhythm. They are the three primary building blocks to music. What what would be the three building blocks to the human heart? Well, I think of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our worship team training leaders are highly effective leaders. That's you because you are involved in music which is important to your church. It's important to your ministry life. Most of all, your spiritual life with God, your family life, your spouse. So here we go. In discussion about music, what are the three points? Number one, the Father sings the melody into our created being. Not to stay there, but to sing it back. So we're talking about melody. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. I love that. Not just delight, but he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I love that. God in his love, he says, will no longer rebuke rebuke you, no longer condemn you, no longer look darkly upon you or to hide his face from you, but it's the complete opposite. He will rejoice over you. He will sing over you. He will raise you up with song. Could you count the number of melodies that God sings over your heart? As we read here in Zephaniah 3.17, He will no longer rebuke you, but rejoice over you with singing. Just how many melodies do you think God is constantly singing over you and I? I don't believe any of us can come up with that number. But we do believe they exist, that those melodies are there because Scripture says so. And if we were to sing all those melodies back to God, I believe it would take more than a lifetime. Number two, the Son plays the harmony harmony of the gospels i'm sorry of the gospel to enrapture our hearts in order to free us from sin i'll say that again the son plays the harmony of the gospel to enrapture our hearts in order to free us from sin and like what we heard last week in the word of the week last week was that jesus came to give life and to give it abundantly harmony is something as i remember Growing up as a kid, my mom 
taught me how to sing. I remember hearing her voice that guided me to sing the first, second, and third parts. And I remember she would just call out to me, Brandon, you know, this is the third. This is the uh, this is the higher range. This is the lower range. This is the median range. And I remember her sweet voice would just guide me, even though I made the mistakes of learning how to do the harmony. Her main melody would always keep me in alignment. And that's just like our harmony with Jesus. He is the center of our song, the melody that we, uh, God brings us in tune with him. And as we make harmony to sing, we also help, we also help guide others in worship. Uh, this is something that, yes, I share in our workshops. You hear me talk about this every week. Because I really believe that when we make music as a worship team, and and this is what I share with worship teams that I work with all over the country on a Friday and Saturday night, is that your harmony as a team, both, I mean, well, not both, but there's multiple forms. There is the, uh, the musical harmony. There's the spiritual harmony. There is the relational harmony. There's all these different mixes, but the one unifying source that we have is Jesus making harmony. Are you allowing God to do that within your worship team when you lead worship? Or do you have the discord of... I don't know, arguments or bitterness, resentment coming from other team members, coming from staff, coming from a church member, coming from outside of that, coming from family, maybe maybe coming from yourself. Point number three, the Holy Spirit produces the rhythm to our souls. Not to keep the beat to ourselves, but we are to share that with others. So, As I just said, if the problem is myself, if I look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, God says to me, the Holy Spirit says, Brandon, uh, this going on in your heart, that's the problem. And and that's what I meant when I just last shared at point number two. Then my responsibility is to then ask God, okay, then Lord, bring me into alignment with your tempo. Because by the power of his pulse and repetitive pattern of notes, I am to follow the heartbeat of God. I mean, that's that's our job. That's it's not a job, but it's a it's a way of life. It's an excitement. It's a way of living. It's something that it shouldn't be out of obligation. Again, uh, the Lord sings over us, no longer rebuking us, but rejoicing. So why not we rejoice and sing back to God, even in the areas of our life that we're not too happy about. But praise be to God that we have Jesus to change that, and he's come to set us free. So the question I think is healthy for all of us to ask is, Lord, am I playing in time to the heartbeat of you? And where or whenever I'm out of alignment to that click, if you will, then ask the Holy Spirit to draw you nearer so that you can be in unison. I think more and more that when we live life in unison, on time, on beat, in harmony, and the melody with God, then we become that song that God is already singing. We join in the concert. We join in that choir. And how awesome is it to then share that with the people that you worship with? Share that with the family that you live life with. These are things that we talk about even here in our university site. And so when we think about the power of God and the work and artistry of his music, okay, then we ask the question up front on this broadcast, how does this unify and connect the church? I believe that the Lord Jesus gives us every reason we need to be in concert with one another as we sing the anthem of his praise. I believe it comes into play when we also celebrate one another in our steps of salvation and our steps of victory, our steps of healing, our steps of recovery. These are the songs and the sounds of the church, not a perfect trumpet making the perfect sound, but it's a broken vessel maybe even singing half a note. But the beauty is allowing the Holy Spirit 
to sing that entire note for you. I don't believe that God has a favorite radio station, a playlist, age group, ethnicity, or even song. So what is his favorite song of all? The sound of his people. Worship leaders and teams, go make disciples of Jesus. And as you do, make music and sing with people. Guys, we encourage you this week as you step out to make music and song. We also invite you to check out our workshops that can be essential for your worship team at worshipteamtraining.com slash workshops. You will find one-to-one private weekends with me or and your worship team. Uh, that can be uh, me, and when I say me working with you, that can be in our mentoring program that we have, working alongside you as a worship leader. But our workshops work together with myself, you, and your team. We carve out a Friday night of worship, uh, exploration, and teaching on worship. And then Saturday is a full hands on training of vocals and instruments with your worship team. Included in that, you get a music workbook. Uh, And the whole thing is custom tailored according to your needs. And best of all, we come to you. Hey, guys, mention this podcast and get a special worship team training rate just by subscribing to this podcast. And we say thank you. So check it out, worshipteentraining.com slash workshops. And if you want more, friend, then we invite you to check out, as I mentioned before, our mentoring program that grows with you as a worship leader, a 10-week study. Or maybe you just need to have a discussion for an hour just to just to unload and maybe get some things off. This is We are here to help you at every cost. And if you like this podcast also... We humbly ask you to give us a five-star rating on iTunes and iHeartRadio. Even better, share this podcast with a friend. We hope that you're encouraged to be transformed for the leading of worship. And remember, you don't need to be perfect. Just let God transform the way you live life and the way that you lead worship. I'm Brandon Dempsey, worshipteamtraining.com and Worship Team Training University. See you next time. Bye. This has been a Worship Team Training Broadcast and Digital Production with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. We'll see you again right here on worshipteamtraining.com.